Okay, we're going to cover some insects today. Uh, all plants can have pest problems, and although most herbs are pretty resistant, they do get pests, and if people tell you that they're completely carefree, that is not true. Most pests will attack outdoor plants, but there are a few that are specific to indoor plants, and particularly if you've purchased plants from a greenhouse grower. Why do plants get pests anyway? Well, there's a number of reasons. Some plants will serve as hosts for insect larvae. Um, another reason is that the plant is stressed. And oftentimes we'll grow our herbs and other plants in areas that um, are not their natural habitats. Soil may be different than what they prefer, um, maybe too much water, too little water, that kind of thing. So for whatever the reason, the plant gets weak and gets stressed and we don't always see it right away, but that actually is sort of a call for insects to come and invade. It's much easier to attack a weakened plant than one that's stronger. Good bugs or beneficial insects are those bugs that will assist with your gardening attempts. They will eat the bad guys, they will pollinate flowers, consume garden waste like uh, beetles do, and like earthworms, they'll help improve the soil. The first on our list are spiders, and I know people can't stand spiders, but in the garden they really are the good guys. Spiders will catch and eat a lot of flying insects that might otherwise be dining on your plants. Um, and bees, bees are the ultimate pollinator, and those pollinators are responsible for um, your plants flowering and producing seeds. Bees will come in all different shapes and sizes, little bitty tiny guys, all the way up to great big fat bumblebees. Um, you also may see ladybugs or lady beetles and even though the adult insect does not consume a lot of of creatures themselves, their larvae are absolute eating machines. You will find them on the underneath sides of leaves and possibly on the top and they're just the funniest looking little odd alligator long body creature. Next um, you may see praying mantis and praying mantis can get quite large. Um, they will also bite, so do be careful if you are playing with them. They can really pinch. They will eat almost anything that they catch, and uh, sometimes that's even each other. Lace wings are another excellent beneficial to have in your garden. Um, they're not quite as easily spotted as some of the others, but like the ladybug's larva, lace wings larva are eating machines. They will eat all sorts of soft-bodied insects, caterpillars, um, and they do a wonderful job controlling, controlling the bad guys in the garden. Now the bad guys, or destructive pests, are those that really can damage or kill your plants, and it's just frustrating to see your hard work just down the tubes disappear overnight. So one of the first ones that's very common are aphids, and aphids are, are hard to see, um, until you've seen them and you know what to look for. And they're little teeny tiny green insects. They, they have sucking parts on their, their mouth, and they literally suck the juice out of your plants. Um, they can distort leaves and cause the plants to wilt. They also produce this sticky honeydew, which is basically aphid poop, and it attracts um, fungal diseases. So aphids are not a good thing to have. And you may also notice ants, and ant, they used to say that ants farmed the aphids, which is not true, but ants like to eat the sticky honeydew that the aphids leave behind. Um, next, you may see slugs or snails in your garden, and they will collect in damp spots, they will eat the tender plants, and they will eat decaying plants, which is a good thing. Um, one nice thing about slugs is that other animals really like them for dinner, so toads, birds, and other animals um, do like to eat them. You will notice slugs probably in moist areas, so you might not have too much trouble with them in your herb garden. Scale insects um, are not frequently seen on herbs, but if you grow bay, bay is notorious for getting scale insects, and they're kind of hard to find. They almost look like a little wart or a bump on the uh, stems of the plants. I, you don't see them too often on the leaves themselves. Scale insects go through a couple of phases, and when they're in their crawler phase, they will actually crawl about the plant, um, but after that they'll sort of 
suck down to the plant and harden and that's when they become like a wart or a bump and then they are very hard to kill um, because they have kind of a waxy hard coating on them that is impervious to to lots of the insecticides. Um, one thing is nice is that you can use a horticultural oil and spray them and it actually kind of smothers them. Okay, spider mites. Um, these are sometimes also called red mites. They're little teeny tiny guys. They look like little itty bitty red spiders. You may see kind of webbing. Um, they cause discoloration. They also can kill a plant if there's a heavy enough infestation. Um, they're generally easy to take care of with insecticidal soaps and uh, more organic methods. Now there's a few that you just might not be sure of and some of these um, are actually beneficial and can also damage your plants at the same time. Um, butterflies are a perfect example of this. They're beautiful. We love to see them. Uh, they they are great pollinators, but their larva can actually destroy plants. So um, if you have room, one of the nice things to be able to do is to plant extra plants for the larva to eat, and um, that way you can enjoy the butterflies and allow their their babies to have a meal. Flies are another one. Uh, most of the time, you think of flies as just horrible pests, but there are certain flies that are actual actual pollinator flies. And you may see them on plants like um, dill and parsley, a few others. And don't spray them or you'll kill them off in any of the other beneficials too. Um, remember now, the more beneficials that you can attract to your garden, the fewer bad guys you'll have overall. And so natural insect control really is a good thing. Sometimes you'll see other animals in your garden, and they are not always uh, garden friendly. You might see deer if you live in the country. You might see mice and bunnies and squirrels. Don't let their darling little faces fool you because each one of those little animals is come, just ready to, to come in and eat your garden. Um, not all herbs are appetizing to all of these animals, but some of them are, and mice in particular, will eat all sorts of things that you just wouldn't even think of. Um, same with bunnies. So do be careful, and if you notice damage being done that doesn't look like it's from insects, you might want to look out for um, some sort of mammal in your garden, and then take steps to be able to protect your plants. Now most herbs are pretty trouble free when it comes to disease other than um, the damping off that you'll see in in your seedlings um, which can affect anything. But a couple that you should be aware of are leaf spot diseases and mildew. Um, leaf spot may first be noticed in your garden during warm wet conditions. Spots can vary in the color, in the pattern, and the size and it, that will depend entirely on the types of fungus present. Um, it's nothing that you've done. Leaf spot diseases are spread by water splashing, and the more it splashes, the more it spreads, and it will get up on your plants and things. If you save seeds from your herbs, do be aware that some of them can be carried and then will infect the next crop. So um, if you've had a problem, it may be safer to buy fresh seeds next year if you do have problems with them. Um, with your plants dying with leaf spot diseases. Uh, powdery mildew is one that we see a lot on rosemary and bee balm. Rosemary has more death occurring, um, especially when a lack of, of airflow occurs and cooler conditions, and especially with the overly moist or overly damp soils. Um, rosemary is a slow grower and it just can't produce leaves quickly enough to replace leaves that are lost, so you'll end up having the whole plant die. Powdery mildew should be treated very quickly on, on um, bee balm and rosemary, um, although bee balm again will probably survive. But there's a, a recipe in your handout that you can try and um, that generally works very well. Other people have um, said that using a milk spray actually works very well too. Okay, now this one might throw you the little leaf miner larva or maggots have been feeding, crawling throughout the leaf and eating. Um, normally, in, in many plants, the damage is cosmetic, but you will want to pinch each one of these leaves off when you see it and get rid of them because the larva will pupate and drop to the ground and become adults, and then the whole cycle starts all over again. 
Now, you may never, ever see any of these pests or diseases that I've mentioned. Um, you could also see a whole lot of them. It just really depends on where you're growing, your location, if you're growing indoors or outdoors. Every location has its own challenges, so, you know, you're just going to live and learn. Um, and just remember that there's always new things that nature throws at you, and it's how we learn. So if you have successes and if you have failures, those are the things that you learn from.